though I haven't made a video for a while, um, listening to Revival Christian Radio. Um, Christian Radio is a very good app to download from the Play Store if you have an app, uh, Droid. Um, it gives you a very good variety of all the Christian radios like uh, across the world. It's very, very good. So enjoying uh, Revival Radio, KNVBC just now. find it quite good. Um, been enjoying a couple of new channels as well on YouTube about Deliverance. Uh, uh, Lloyd Chin, uh, he, he's got a very new ministry. Um, I feel, you know, again another new Christian doing deliverances. I like the fact that they've got themselves organised. There's a few of them doing deliverances and uh, you can meet with them. Um, so I recommend that, you know, even if you're a believer, it's, it's good to go on and get prayer. And uh, he's on Zoom, I think, most nights. So you can meet him on there. Um, so yeah, um, also I think the best deliverance uh, is, is probably what you might call a self-deliverance, but the fact is that you can't, nobody can deliver themselves, you know. What it means is that you're spending time one-to-one -one with the Lord and actually taking His direction. Uh, the, and basically all of us have been been through the Lord, the Lord's name is... Uh, the deliverer means deliverer from sin. You know, that Jesus came to deliver his people from their sins. That's what it says in the Gospels. That's what the name Jesus means. Um, the salvation part comes when you actually start obeying Christ. Okay, when you actually... It's not just a once prayer that you repent of your unbelief. Okay, because... Uh, the Apostle Paul said, even the devils believe and tremble. So if it's just about, you know, um, saying, oh, I believe in God, you know, I repent of my unbelief. Well, that's, that's you know, even the devils believe. I mean, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be saved. Um, the term saved in the Bible is usually referred to um, as a physical deliverance, but obviously we're using it in the term of a spiritual deliverance because when when you sin carnally in the flesh, um, then you transgress God's law. Um, like you can't divorce a husband or wife for wanting to sleep with the person. Now, even if their if their mind's not in the marriage, right, and they're sort of lusting after other other people, you know, after a while. They probably will commit adultery, but you can't you can't just divorce someone for for that. But you you should pray for someone because they have to change their spirit. They have to refocus, readjust their life, reprioritize re reprioritize even their life, especially if they're a Christian. I mean, there's a lot of Catholics that do that, sleep around or they fornicate and so on. In their mind, they might not just sleep around physically, but it's not until you actually physically do something that you actually break one of God's commandments and yet Jesus said I came to magnify the law and so if you have any unforgiveness in your heart if, if you really really are angry with someone Jesus says you're no better than a murderer now Jesus didn't say you've broken the command of thou shall not uh, kill or thou shall not murder but what he's saying is in your soul that sin is harbored within you and uh, you, you're in great danger of, of, of uh, losing your salvation because you're harboring um, a certain sin. You're harboring it in your life. And through that, you will get demons. Basically, that's what happens. And uh, what, what, if you spend any great amount of time with the Lord, He will always command you to forgive people. Um, He'll help you also to forgive these people, and he, and he'll give you promises as well. Um, a lot of the time, it's uh, misunderstandings. A lot of it is misunderstandings in life. But uh, to get uh, a life clear of any demons, we must not only repent, ask Jesus Christ into our life, but we must fully submit to the Lord, and we must take His direction 
um, with regards to our own personal salvation because there's no salvation except through Jesus Christ who came to deliver his people from their sin. Okay, um, So if you're actually physically sinning, now sins in the Old Testament and New Testament are the same, the exact same. In fact, there are more laws in the New Testament than there is in the Old Testament because Christ said, I came to magnify the law. And so if you say you're living under Christ's law, you're actually living under more laws than was in the Old Testament. The law, you must remember, is the law of sin and death was uh, dealt with at the cross. And so no longer have you to suffer uh, and be under the condemnation of the law because the guilt was removed at the cross. But what we you now must live under is the law of faith. The law of faith in Jesus Christ because it's only faith in Jesus Christ that takes away sin. And you must live under that every single day. Every single day. You must live under the law of faith in Jesus Christ. Whether it be interceding for others, repenting of your own sin, sin allowing the Holy Spirit to show you things that God wants you to do better or the way He wants you to do things or the way he wants you to readjust your priorities. Um, because it does say in the book of James, unless you are carrying your brothers and sisters' burdens, unless you are carrying one another's burdens, you are not fulfilling the law. It doesn't matter if you say you are a Torah keeper, or, or you eat kosher. These things aren't going to save you. It's not the keeping of the law that will save you, but it's faith in Jesus Christ that's going to save you, because it's his blood that was shed at the cross, that forgives your sin and continues to correct you and put you into right relationship with God. In effect, it's like walking a tightrope. Sometimes you have to lean this side towards the law and, and allow it to, to convict you, allow the Holy Spirit to show you where you're going wrong in your life. And sometimes you're leaning the other side into which you're repenting of that sin and you're having just faith in Jesus Christ to sort your life out. So, so it's a balance between knowing the commands and knowing the law and actually acting upon faith in Jesus Christ. Because some people, they can get a knowledge that they're sinning and then they can get offended. Straight away they can just get offended at the messenger. It might be uh, a man or woman of God that's sent to you to show you something that you're not doing right. And then straight away your carnal person will start saying, well, I go to church every week. I've been a Christian for, and so on and so on, and they get a little bit prideful. And that's where, the, when the flesh comes in. You're not leaning on Jesus, you're, you're leaning on your flesh. You're, you're, you're actually trying to justify yourself before God. Not a single one of us is perfect. Sometimes we might have a perfect day in Jesus Christ, uh, into which we've done His will, we've done exactly what He's asked us to do, the way in which He's wanted us to do it and with the power and conviction that, that he's given us in the Holy Spirit. And that, that's a great day. I mean, Jesus said himself, be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. And so some days we, we might just have a, have a great day casting out demons. We might heal, heal a couple of sick people. We might give the gospel. We might uh, uh, revive a backslider. Uh, we might uh, do some show some kindness, you know, clothe clothe a widow or an orphan or a homeless person, you might just go home and think, well, thank you, just thank God, because because you've had a great day. Other days, uh, the carnal nature or whatever whatever Satan's doing, you know, he's sending his demons into your life, and some days it's just putting that shield of faith up, you know, just reminding yourself that um, of all the promises that we have in, in Christ Jesus, and that every single promise is yes and amen. And that uh, your calling is irrevocable in Christ. Um, some days we're under attack spiritually and we, we just have to put that shield of faith up. Um, another thing worth bearing in mind, we had a discussion with a group of Christians the other day. And uh, we were discussing, is it, re is it relevant for a Christian to take part in pagan festivals? Is it relevant for a Christian to take part in pagan festivals, and I think we quoted uh, verses out of uh, 
2 Corinthians and many, many other verses, especially the one that Paul the Apostle says that you can't take part in the table of, of the Holy Spirit and the table of demons. You know, you can't take part in both. So, what the Apostle Paul was talking about, he was trying to put things in perspective. He was trying to show the pagans who were coming to Christ that all these things that you were doing what you know, they were just carnal things. That the, 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 all these idols they were sacrificing to, like, don't 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 have a guilt complex if you've accidentally eaten food sacrificed to an idol. You just go to Christ and repent about it. But what we're meant to do, in one of the verses, he says we're meant to take a stand. Um, we're not meant to partake in the food. But if we're invited along to one of these feasts, say for example, someone is having a Halloween uh, feast at the church. Someone is having an Ishtar, Easter feast at their church. And you go along and they they start eating the food and, you, and you're thinking, oh wow, there's a couple of sandwiches here and then you see Easter eggs. And then somebody stands up and then says, well, you know, this is what uh, uh, Jesus did and uh, this is what the Easter egg represents and the Easter bunnies here are all here and and then you think, oh wait a minute, this isn't mentioned in the Bible, this isn't Christian. And so you're, you're actually called by Jesus Christ to give testimony. And uh, one of the testimonies I have in my life is allowing God to show me which festivals I'm to take part in. And what I saw from the Word of God was that Jesus Christ was um, sacrificed at Passover. He was the Passover lamb. And so I am to partake, if I am to partake of any feast or festival, I am to do it on God's prescribed holy days. For example, the Feast of Pentecost, we're meant to eat leavened bread. Just like in the Lord's Supper, they give out the wheat bread. Well, you're meant to eat uh, wheat leavened bread on the Feast of Pentecost. So I'll make a loaf if, if I have time, and I'll, I'll maybe invite a couple of friends around. We had it once or twice the past few years. And we'll break bread, and it's having like the Lord's Supper. On the Passover, we'll, we'll make unleavened bread, which represents the body of Christ, and um, because He came out of the leaven of the world, and then He allowed Himself, after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to be leavened by the Holy Spirit. So that's what Pentecost represents. And so this is true teaching. This is teaching that God is pleased with, but He's not pleased with people going to. Christian churches that represent God's Son and teaching people about Easter bunnies and uh, eggs because this corresponds to one of the pagan gods I uh, believe uh, the egg-laying rabbit female goddess called Ishtar which has nothing to do with Jesus and we're meant to give witness and say I'm not partaking of the food here and Paul actually said this you're meant to say I'm not partaking of this food uh, lest um, you actually make any of the brethren sin who are weaker in their conscience than you are. Because you have the Holy Spirit. You, you, you have a conscience. You have a stronger conscience before God. But because of these nominal Christians don't have a strong conscience, they have a weak conscience, and you're meant to show them that these things are wrong. That's what the Apostle Paul uh, taught, because we read these verses out the other day. Um, I believe it was from 2 Corinthians, but we read quite a number of verses out. But as my eyes were scanning down, I found these verses, and uh, obviously it corresponds with what the Holy Spirit has shown me and taught me. And so the, uh, although the man was saying he thought that the Apostle Paul partook in, in eating food sacrificed to idols, it was clear that the Apostle Paul didn't. This is exactly what the Sanhedrin, or the Jews, accused him of doing, breaking the Torah and teaching that it's okay to break the Torah. He wasn't doing that. He was breaking it down for the new converts, and he was actually um, breaking it all down and showing you an idol is nothing, it's not a god, but what you have to watch is the devil or the demon behind every idol, and when you partake of that food, you will get demons, okay? And they have to be cast out through the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you admit your sin, he's faithful to forgive you. Shalom.